So if you think about just the competition that you're going against, you have to do something that's going to set you apart um, from that avalanche of information that's being created and published online every day. If you take that out, that's 20, 21 million blog articles every week and 90 million every month, and you start doing the math over the course of a year and years as they pass, um, you're up against a pretty significant um, competition, and just doing short articles, the same old, same old, um, is not going to cut it. Specific to long form, um, so if we compare long form articles to short form articles, they actually generate nine times more leads. And we're going to get into what long form means and what that really is as we walk through the presentation, but uh, suffice it to say that long form content significantly outperforms short form. Content marketing in general actually costs less and generates more leads than traditional marketing. So um, outbound marketing, other traditional marketing methods um, do not generate the same amount of leads uh, and they end up costing more over time. I will say that long form content and inbound marketing specifically does take more work and investment on the front end. But when you look at those costs over time, uh, they're significantly less per lead uh, to generate. And then email marketing. You might think, well, why is email marketing in here? That, that's not really content marketing. Uh, but it's related to the whole system that we're going to walk you through uh, with how to generate those leads. So email marketing is part of that content piece where you're bringing them in on an article, demonstrating your thought leadership. <clears throat> and then you are converting them onto an email list and putting them in an email funnel and nurturing them and warming them up to some point in the process where either the salesperson is gonna take over and make that warm connection now that you've demonstrated more of your expertise through all these articles that you've sent them now that they're in that email funnel. But uh, in general, email marketing and its success really is still a very, a very effective tool some people might think, well, email marketing is dead. You might have heard that. Um, I would say it's just the opposite. Um, now, strategic email marketing <laughs> is what's going to move the needle and just doing email blasts and that sort of thing um, somewhat randomly is probably not going to generate uh, the kind of leads and conversions that you're looking for. But specifically, um, the statistic here is that for every dollar spent on email marketing, you can expect about a $40 ROI on that. So what is long form content? It is longer, <laughs> for sure, the by definition versus short, term, short content. But um, long form content can take a number of forms. It can be an article, right, an ebook. It can be an infographic. It could be a video. Um, and the surprising thing is that longer content is counterintuitive. It actually generates more interest, more social shares, uh, more links. So people that are other sites, other reputable sites in your industry will link to you more naturally or more likely to, to link to you, which gives you more um, reputation in the eyes of like Google, which we're going to also talk about how to use SEO to kind of turbocharge this whole process. Uh, but that works in just about any format, even video on YouTube and specifically. Longer videos actually get more engagement, they get more organic uh, placement within Google, so your video is more likely to show up. And actually people read them, consume them. And if you think about it, you're, pro you're providing some in-depth content. That's really how you're setting yourself apart from just all of the shorter articles that are being churned out every day by your competitors. So if you want to generate leads consistently, this is the formula. Um, we have that long form content and today for this presentation, while there are different forms that you can use to create long form content, we're going to focus on articles. Uh, specific, usually it's a blog article or just um, an article that lives on your site, whether it's on or not on the blog. So long form content plus SEO and um, by SEO we mean there's a whole process around which topics we're going to target for these articles, how we write them and structure them and then even how we promote and distribute them. And then if you tag on the email automation piece, that's even more powerful because you're getting people from Google, right, to come into these articles that are demonstrating your thought leadership in your space. <clears throat> then you're getting them to sign up on that 
content article for an email um, subscription specific to, then you're giving them an ebook or something that's uh, of significant value. So let's say the article is, um, you know, the ultimate guide to emotional intelligence. That's the article that's on Google. And you're getting them to that article, then you're offering them an ebook of 23 ways to increase your emotional intelligence. Then they get an email funnel, and then they get three, five, 10, 20 emails, one a week or every couple of weeks with more content, um, as well as then product and service offerings sprinkled throughout that, but you're still leading mostly with content. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the benefits of long-form content. We've touched on a few of them. Um, it really gives you superior SEO visibility, for sure. Um, there is, there really is no other way to, um, on, on Google to get significant traffic than to use this long-form content strategy. There's certainly other ways to do it in other channels, but if you're going for Google, uh, this is a huge way uh, to leverage and gain um, new traffic and new leads that way. We talked about thought leadership too. Um, that really, a lot of people talk about being a thought leader and in your space and in your industry. Very few people are because very few people are demonstrating that. And one of the best ways to do that is through long form content that actually ranks in Google. People start seeing more of your articles when they're searching in Google and they notice that you're demonstrating that true thought leadership in many different ways. It also brings in more social media um, shares, and traffic, as well as referral traffic. As I mentioned, as you get more um, of your industry linking from their article to yours and referencing that, more people are clicking on that and actually coming to your article, so that's just another uh, source of traffic and generating leads. And then decreased marketing costs over time. Um, as I mentioned before, it does take an investment and a commitment to a significant amount of time. So this isn't something you're going to do and in a couple of months you're going to get results. This is going to be something you have to commit to for 12, 18, 24 months. But as you build that over time, then year two, year three, year four, you're benefiting off of that um, that content that you built, and as you start to gain more rankings and more traffic from Google, and then you get more people in your email funnel that are subscribing to that, uh, becomes this flywheel effect where you're really consistently generating leads. But it takes time and a commitment, just like a lot of things, um, to, to be successful with this strategy. Some of the other benefits, uh, just educating, strengthening relationships. Uh, both with new customers' prospects as well as uh, existing ones. Um, again, you're continually giving them information with no strings attached. Um, you might say, well, the email marketing is a string, and that's true, but you're giving them those long-form content articles whether or not they subscribe to your email um, and get on your email list. It moves them through the sales funnel faster, so if you think about it, if you just get somebody to come to your website, either through a long-form content article or not, and they view something there, most of those people view that and they leave. They never contact you or they might down the road. If you can get them onto an email funnel and start to warm them up, now you have a direct relationship with them and now you can talk to them. Now salespeople can reach out to them if they opened X number of emails or clicked on X number of emails. They express some intent uh, behind what your, your content and your offerings are, then you can reach out to them and start that uh, warm uh, conversation more easily rather than just hoping that they fill out your contact form or hoping that they call you. And then lastly, uh, this process is set up to generate, generate qualified leads. So we'll talk about the process here in a minute, but basically we, we strategically choose the keywords and the topics that your audience is interested in so that we know that they're a more qualified lead coming into that article off of Google and then getting into your email funnel. All right, we're gonna talk and look at some case study data. So I'm not gonna blind you with science. We're not going to try to confuse you. There is some, there is some complexities to be candid about this process and there's a lot of 
moving parts to the whole system and what makes this successful. And sometimes little steps or little things, if they're missed, can cause problems down the line and cause it not to be successful. Uh, but we're going to go through some of those details and try to explain that. And with any clients that we work with, we really work hard to educate and explain the process. We don't want to, this is not a black box, you know, just trust us and let us do the work. We, it's important to explain that process and show you um, why all these steps, uh, that we need to follow them and why they're important. Anybody, who knows of Initiative One? I raise my hands. Well, quite a few of you. They're a leadership development company here in Green Bay. Uh, we've gone through their process. They've helped uh, with our own culture and helping us uh, get better at working as a team. <clears throat> and we've helped them do some work as well. Um, so through this process, um, we've generated, we've grown their organic search traffic by 400%. So um, we've also gotten then some press mentions through some major publications as a result of this process and ultimately led to a $300,000 contract that they got directly off our efforts. Not indirectly, but they called, they said, we saw this article um, in this other publication uh, and it impacted us so much, we want to work with you. We don't want to work with anybody else. So it's pretty powerful. Um, not that every single contact is going to generate a $300,000 contract um, out of that uh, interaction, but you can see the power uh, and the potential of that. We've done work um, on our own website and our own content marketing, and um, we had about a 1,300% increase. Part of the reason that number is so high is our organic traffic was pretty low when we started, so we had a long ways to go, uh, but we've been doing that for a little over a year now. Uh, just to give you some perspective on the time it takes <clears throat> to do that. And in addition to um, growing that much traffic, organic new traffic, people that know little to nothing about uh, Imaginasium, and we're showing them those longer uh, content articles and demonstrating our experience, then we have those email opt-ins on each of those pages, so we get them, and we've more than doubled uh, the people on our email list uh, in the space of about 12 months. So. It's pretty significant for us, so that's not just more people that we're talking to or with our bi-weekly newsletter, but those people are on segmented email funnels that, depending on the content that they came in on, then they get an email series relative to that specific um, topic that they came in on. So we're personalizing that, each of those email funnels relative to the different articles that we've created. And then uh, a nationwide locksmith company called Mr. Riki. We've grown uh, their organic search traffic by almost 400%. And then specifically uh, related to sales, uh, we grew their sales conversion. So on, in their case, they have, people can sign up to, you know, to get the locksmith service right away so we can track that directly to a sale. And they had a, a pretty significant increase uh, 12% uh, in growth in sales conversions directly off of those efforts. So what are the downsides? Are there any? Um, where does paid traffic strategies fit into this? I would say there, there's always pros and cons with any strategy you're going to focus on. Long-form content is a long-term strategy. Like I said before, it's something you've got to start and stick with over time in order to see that true payoff. We certainly recommend shorter term strategies that might be paid traffic that are gonna help you generate leads today, um, whether that's LinkedIn or Facebook or Google. Uh, there are ways you can go to the traffic store and buy traffic, you know, buy people to come visit your pages and try to convert them sooner or at least get them to the sales team and have them uh, follow up with them at that point. This is typically how it looks. Uh, with, uh, as I mentioned, you've got to stick with this over time. It's not something that's going to happen right away, both in terms of traffic. This, you know, you're going along and it's slowly building and then it really spikes up. So that goes to the same for traffic, for emails, for leads, and ultimately for sales. So this is not something to, if you need to generate something right away, you should be doing some paid traffic, some short-term stuff. But you really should be pursuing this because over the long term, this is going to be the best benefit for your company and ultimately is going to be a lower cost over time. All right, so now I've run out of slides. 
We're going to make you do some work. Um, I've emailed every one of you this um, Google form here. You don't have to copy that down, but you should have an email. If you don't, um, just raise your hand and let me know. I sent an email earlier this morning. Click on that link um, and go through and complete this exercise. The first question is um, here, we're basically taking you through what we would do with the client when we're helping you identify the topics that you want to target for these long-form content articles. So the first one is more about products. What are the words, keywords that you think prospects would be typing into a search engine related to your products? The second one is about articles, so those are different. People are searching for information versus I want to buy this product or service. Um, and then um, also some of your direct competitors just some websites that you directly compete against, and then just some industry websites that also you may be not competing for directly, but are creating content articles in your space. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with um, one of these answers up here. We're going to, uh, so this one was, um, who is this B. Murphy at Romo Inc.? Can you raise your hand? Who put this up here? Oh, right there, what's your name? Becky. Um, so we're going to use this just as an example. So <clears throat> those first couple of answers to questions one and two, we, we're trying to get inside of the head of your prospect. So some of them may be looking for a product or service right out of the gate. And so that is one way to get some SEO traffic. Uh, primarily, this strategy is focused on content, so it's more about the second question. But the first question still provides us some context and also gives us a springboard. So we take these keywords that you provided, along with our own brainstorming and expanding those further, run them through a couple of paid uh, keyword research tools, Ahrefs or SEMrush, our two very reputable ones in the SEO space. And then we identify keywords that fit three criteria. One, it has to have enough search intent or search volume, meaning it's broad enough topic that um, quite a few people are searching for it so that when you do rank for that, it actually turns into significant traffic uh, because we don't want to just rank for something that one or two people are looking for and that doesn't, that's not going to generate very many leads for us. Um, the second part, it has to be not too competitive. So with these research tools, we can identify what pieces of content aren't too competitive against your um, against who you're competing against that could be direct competitors for those articles and it's specific to that that topic or that keyword phrase that you're targeting for that for that article uh, but it could also be an industry publication that's competing for that space as well uh, and then the third thing is just search intent so that goes back to are people searching for a product and service or are they searching for information for content uh, we filter that all through that, and then we provide recommendations. Um, I'll just show you real quickly. This is kind of what that looks like or can look like. Uh, we have these kind of in certain buckets based on broader topics, and then we'll have certain keyword clusters with certain. Uh, these are the this is the average monthly search volume and how difficult it is to rank uh, for, and then we provide those recommendations to you based on our research, and then that's where the process of actually creating and writing the article starts. Next, we're going to talk about some of the typical steps of, of content marketing, and then that's going to lead us into our secret sauce and what, what we do differently. And now, I've teased that a little bit with the keyword research aspect of things and filling in uh, those topics or those keywords that you think people are going to be searching for, and we're going to get into more of that process and how that actually plays out. But certainly, um, starting with any content marketing, you want to make sure your brand is in the right place. The way you're communicating to people is more about what they're interested in with an emotional appeal than it is about what the company wants to talk about or even what the company initially wants to sell. Because <clears throat> consumers, even in a B2B sense, um, they don't want to be sold. They want information first. They want uh, you to give a lot of, the, of that value away up front before you ever ask for the sale. And certainly uh, that, that landscape is changing with younger generations as they move into the workforce um, and they're becoming those decision makers and those influencers. Uh, so that is more and more uh, a trend that way. Documenting business goals, this is really important. It's easy to 
jump in. We got to do some marketing, right? We got to do some content marketing, create some articles and get them out there. But if we don't slow down to speed up, um, we'll often miss the mark. So having the right, making sure we align those goals with what we're doing. Um, generally with content marketing, it is to generate leads uh, so that they either convert at some point through the email process or that sales team can follow up on those leads later. <clears throat> The other reason goals are important is because we want to allocate our budget accordingly to those goals to make sure that as those priorities are, we're giving the most money and time uh, to the right strategies and tactics. Uh, audit and repurpose some of your existing content. Now this generally doesn't mean you can use, you can just repurpose everything you have on your site and you're done. You usually have to create some additional content, but there could be some good pieces there that you can incorporate into some of this uh, moving forward and you don't have to create everything from scratch. <clears throat> Creating a plan, a strategy of how we're going to actually go about this and what we're going to do when over the course of, you know, usually a year at least uh, where you're planning that out. Now you might get halfway through the year, even a quarter into it and realize you need to make some tweaks and adjustments. That's, that's fine, but it's still having a plan and a strategy that has an overarching uh, goal and mission, what you're trying to accomplish is, is critically important. Obviously, you need to have writers, um, you need somebody to edit, help you publish, and then promotion and distribution is a key final step that's often forgotten. Um, so, because I think we, we do all this planning, right? We get everything aligned, we're gonna do all this content marketing, we're just glad to push it out the door. Now it's live on the website. <laughs> We're glad that uh, we don't have to do, we can move on to the next thing. But that promotion and distribution is a critical step. So now we're gonna talk uh, a little bit about our secret sauce and how we do things. Uh, we certainly follow all those steps, but there's some additional things that we do as well that we know have made uh, the content marketing, specifically long form content marketing successful. And uh, these are things that uh, are repeatable process that we've used for our clients uh, that we've learned from others um, that are um, in this space as well. Starts with keyword research. That's where that Google form comes in. Uh, we get some information from you about what you think, and then we uh, take that much further, run it through tools, analyze, and condense it down and offer you recommendation on which articles we think you should write first and why. Because this process does take such a long time, we want to be as strategic as possible and as much as possible shorten that time up. Um, you can only make this move so fast. You can only make SEO and content marketing move so fast. Um, some of that's resources, but even then with all the resources in the world, it's still going to take time for all the process to unfold and for Google to recognize your authority on those topics. So second phase obviously is writing, editing, publishing. I say structured content on here because it's not just writing a longer article. And by long form content, we mean 2,000 or more words. So it's not just writing, okay, I wrote at least 2,000 words, we published this article, that's, that's, <laughs> that's gonna waste more resources because it's gonna take you longer. Um, and if you don't have a, a strategy behind how to promote that and distribute that and also how to structure the, the article with um, using your, your heading tags, your H1, H2, H3, H4, and so on, um, internal and external links, using images and embedded videos in those articles, visual treatments, uh, even bolding and italics and some of those things uh, to keep people visually engaged because these are longer articles. Um, if you don't do that structuring well, uh, and even how you use the keywords on those pages, uh, you can't overuse or you shouldn't overuse them because uh, it won't be good for Google, but uh, you can strategically and you should strategically use um, those keywords that you're now targeting based on those recommendations that we had throughout that article. So there's a lot that goes into just writing, uh, curating, making sure it's the best article out there, looking at the other articles that are ranking against you and making sure that yours, once it does rank in Google, is actually better, is significantly better than what's already there because it's a very competitive space and more and more companies are using the strategy. We think we're done right, you know, in, in many cases we've done all this, we've done the keyword research, we've written the article, we published it, it's a great article, it's well written, well thought out, and 
visually interesting for people to uh, read it, but we're not done. Um, hoping that people will find it, um, and even if you push it out to your social media and your email list, that only has a certain amount of distribution. So, and the typical life cycle of a content article goes like this. You know, maybe a month, maybe two months. Again, you're pushing out to your email list, your social media, and then it pretty much dies because then it's pushed down in the history of your blog section, your article section, and most people aren't going to read through that. The beauty of the SEO thing is that your trajectory is like this. Now, at some point, it might, it might plateau, but it'll remain consistent uh, for a long time because you're continually getting traffic from Google, new people coming into those articles over time. So we don't want to forget the next few steps. Um, so influencer email outreach. So once you publish the article, we highly recommend a hyper-targeted email outreach. So you're basically going to, for the keyword phrase that we're targeting, right? Uh, if it's emotional intelligence, as that earlier example, that let's say that's the topic of our article. <clears throat> and that's what we're targeting. We're going to go out and look at the top results on Google for that keyword phrase for emotional intelligence, who we're going to be competing against. And then through tools, specifically Ahrefs is the tool that we use, we can actually reverse engineer all the people that link to those top ranking articles. And then we can add email addresses to all of that and through an automated cold email outreach to those people, basically the pitch is, hey, you've linked out to this other article here. Here's why ours is unique and different and better. Would you consider um, linking to our article? Um, and linking is a really critical factor. And the reason we do this is because even, there, even though there are over 200 ranking factors that Google uses to rank a particular page, um, there still, are, still is a primary one that's most important, and that is links. And it's not just any link, but it's quality links and the reputation of those links. So we're basically reaching out to all these people who we know are interested in this topic because they've linked to it, and we're asking, and we generally get um, even a few from that list to link to ours. That helps us jumpstart things and show Google, hey, we've got some reputable links, um, some relevant links, so it can't just be reputable, it has to be relevant to the topic, and we know that's relevant because uh, we're actually reverse engineering um, those people that have linked to the articles on the same topic before. And it's a great way to jumpstart links built to that and demonstrate to Google right out of the gate, hey, this is a good article and we should start to consider it for ranking. Now, there are more steps beyond that, um, but that's really the first step once you publish it um, to do. Um, the email opt-ins that I mentioned before, it's important to have other opt-ins, not just get our newsletter as an opt-in on those pages, but actually here's an ebook of 23 tips or whatever. Uh, and that can be some other content you've already created. doesn't necessarily have to be something brand new that you create, but having something of value that's related to the article that they came in on from Google. So it needs to be similar in topic. It doesn't always have to be the exact same topic, but similar. That'll entice them to get on your email list. And that's where the automation and that nurturing happens, where you set up those email series and email flows based on where they came in and what article they're most interested in. And then at some point, uh, you're either going to track those direct sales um, either directly off the content article or from the emails that they then get and determine how successful that is, all those campaigns are at generating those leads or and or you're going to hand that off to sales and arm them with information to look in there and see how did each of those contexts that went through all of that process now, they went through all the emails. And let's say you've got uh, person A, they got, they got 10 emails over 10 weeks they opened eight of them and clicked on five of them. Well, that lead score is going to be higher than somebody who, you know, they got the same 10 emails, they opened three and clicked on one. That first person has showed more intent and is much more likely to convert, and that's the person that the, that the salesperson then wants to spend time with, sending a manual email now, um, or maybe making a phone call. And then you can develop some sales business rules around at what point 
in that automation process? Does it make sense for sales to come in and start, um, start having that conversation? And by that point, they're already warmed up. They're not a completely cold lead. They know you've, you've already demonstrated a number of your expertise uh, and your thought leadership around what you offer. So they're already ready. They're, they're further along in the sales process than somebody who's just read an article and you hope they call you or hope they fill out their, your con their contact form on your website. Um, just to go back to email marketing piece and remind us that it's, it's really a critical um, tool to use for warming uh, prospects up, uh, but just in general, um, it's used as the primary lead generation channel for 89% of marketers. And that goes for B2B and for B2C. So email marketing with strategy behind it, well thought out and a well laid out plan um, is absolutely effective. And it, it makes your salespeople and your sales team much more efficient with their time because then they're, they're talking to people who are, have been nurtured through the whole process. So are we done yet? <laughs> I know it can seem like a lot and this can be overwhelming. Um, but it's just like anything else. When you want to do something well, it generally is going to take time, and it just it, the journey starts with one step at a time. I mean, all this stuff that we've learned and 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 we know how to be successful at this has taken us years to develop and to walk out and to make real. But it is absolutely worth it. And if you have that long-term view in mind. Um, that is going to be the best for your company, ultimately, your sales team, in terms of generating those leads. But I will say, too, don't forget, you get through all this process, right? You still have to regularly review, measure, iterate on that stuff. And a lot of times, you're, as you're going through the process, you're iterating as you go, right? You have the strategy and plan, and not that you totally pivot from it, but you might have to realize some of the stuff you've done before you look at some of these email opt-ins aren't performing as well as you thought. So you may need to swap some of those out um, on different articles, or you may need to change the email nurturing series. Maybe email series A, B, and C are working great, and D, not so much. Well, what do we need to change in those? So some of that's looking back and changing what you've already done, and then applying that also to what you're doing going forward um, in your marketing. So. Anything digital is always this continual iteration process because we have all the data, we come up with a good strategy, we apply it, and then we have to see how it goes and react and adapt and optimize to the data that we're seeing and how well each of those are performing. All right, any questions? Anybody has? Don't be shy, that won't bite. Yes, here, if you can speak to that. So by long form, like, what do you mean as far as how long, I mean, with everyone's attention span being so yeah. short, that surprises me that you want to have a really long article. What, what parameters? So generally, uh, long form content is articles is 2,000 or more words. Uh, you might be surprised that some are as long as Five, ten, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. These are really books, but they're articles. Um, thank you. And um, not that you sh you need to write ten or twenty or thirty thousand word articles, but just to give you some perspective on what some people are doing. If you think about it, um, not only do they get more, they're more likely to get links because not everybody's doing this, right? Um, so you're setting yourself apart. You're if you have to write an article that's 5,000 words, it better be valuable information and stuff that people really need to know about an in-depth topic. Um, so you're going to get more links, more social shares. Um, you'll also get more people to stay on those pages longer. So just by definition, they're longer. And that's an engagement metric to Google, how long people are staying on your page. Um, so some of those at the really far end of the spectrum, the 20 or 30,000 word articles, they're getting hours of time on page. So the, long, the time people are staying on those are hours, not minutes. So all of this points back to what users are looking for. And if they're looking for an answer to an in-depth question, we're going to provide a piece of long-form content that goes back to 
making sure we do the keyword research so we know that this is a broad enough topic, there's enough people searching for it, and it warrants a longer article. Then that answer your question? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Where do you think that podcasts fit into long-form content? Yeah. Is it long-form content, or is it part of a digital marketing strategy? Yeah, I would say um, podcasts specifically are um, a longer-form format. Um, they, I would consider them long-form content. I think that all goes back to your goals and what your organizational goals are, and if it's whether it's to generate leads or sales or even other um, types of goals, maybe to hiring or some other things, that would determine what strategies that you should approach or you should put into, and also depending upon your budget. I think the, the, the overarching thing is it's easy to get distracted by lots of different things. Oh, podcasts are hot, or oh, even long-form content, you know, article content is hot, or oh, video is hot, or these things. and. It's way too easy to just jump at that because there is always something new um, or something that's hot right now. The key thing is to go back and make sure you have the, what are your business goals and, and your budget and how, does, how can we best achieve those given that. That answer your question? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> So I don't know if I'm allowed to participate, but I will. <laughs> um, I just want to share with everybody in the room that you can ask anybody on the team <coughs> at Imaginasium that they had to drag me along kicking and screaming with the investment we made in this. I said, nobody reads long form content. Nobody's going to take the time. This is a total waste of our resources, but guess what? I trust the team. Let's go. Well, you saw the results, and we doubled down this year. We'll dub we're doubling our investment in what we've done. And we're a small firm, but it's worked for us. It doesn't work for everybody. It takes a commitment. But, I mean, I'm sure a big percentage of you in the room this morning are like, oh, my God, that's crazy. We've got to wait two <laughs> years for results. Well, why would we ever do this? Why would we ever go down that path? If you explore it and you can dedicate yourself to it, it works. That's all I'm saying. And you don't have to do it with us. We aren't here to sell you anything. This works, and there's resources out there you can do it with. And to Dennis's point, this isn't, this isn't for every company, right? Um, it needs to be, it needs to fit your goals and your budget and what you're trying to accomplish. And maybe this is a later thing. Uh, but for many, it is a great long-term strategy. If you want to establish yourself as a true thought leader and over time, you against when you're comparing yourself against your competitors you're going to be the one that's coming up in searches consistently more than they are other questions here just a second So I'm just a sales guy, but <laughs> is, is LinkedIn an appropriate uh, platform for long form content? It can be. Um, so you could create a long article. So they have a place where you can post an article within, uh, within LinkedIn's you know, sphere and then try to bring people into those articles that way. Uh, it wouldn't be exactly this process, but it would take some of those elements. Um, the key thing there is then, uh, probably using ads or something within LinkedIn's system to drive people to that article. So you always have to think about there's so much content that's being created, whether it's articles or videos. You look at any of the statistics, they're just climbing every single day. You just have inf almost infinite competition, right? And, and you either have to run paid traffic, so you have to pay to get people to those articles or videos or whatever, or you have to develop some sort of strategy like this where it's going to take time on the front end, but then you're going to get people through consistently because we, we all want to do some sort of marketing effort. You know, oh, we're going to create this article, we're going to create this infographic, create this video, create this podcast, and it's going to bring in all this traffic. Well, that's just, that's just half of it, you know, the strategy of creating it, but then how are you going to distribute it on an ongoing basis and then generate those leads consistently? <clears throat> Anybody else? All right, well, 
I'll be here after if you want to ask me some questions one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we can chat about some things, but thank you for coming and hope you enjoyed the conversation and the breakfast. Have a great day.